Hi there. You're in the lab with your mate JJ. <clears throat> Haven't done a video for a while, so thought I'd record one this afternoon. Uh, there's a lot of choice about what we might do. I've got a bunch of projects to work on. Um, but I thought what I might do today is just uh, tear down this homemade continuity tester. I put this thing together a couple of years ago as I was just starting to, um, to develop, to, to build my lab. And uh, at that point, I didn't own a multimeter. I hadn't bought one yet. So I, uh, I needed to test the continuity of something. And I, uh, I just made myself a continuity tester. This thing's got a green LED, two banana plug terminals, um, and two uh, AA batteries in the back, just in this little um, plastic case, which I've marked uh, with a label R. Um, I, as I recall, I got a 10 pack of these plastic cases, so I've got more of them. And in fact, <clears throat> I'm planning to use one of them uh, for my uh, capacitor discharge circuit, which is this little circuit here. And again, this is just another plastic uh, uh, box similar to the one that I used here. So uh, all we're going to do today is pop this guy open and have a look inside him. It's not going to be a particularly long video. Uh, well, it oughtn't be, because uh, it's pretty simple. And we're just going to have a look inside this thing, which is just a couple of wires, really. Um, I thought I might have a look in it. I also uh, flirted with the idea of improving it. And maybe, uh, as well as having the LED, maybe a buzzer. And I do have some buzzers. Um, but uh, there's not really any call for it. I, 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 at this point, I have a multimeter, several, in fact, with a continuity tester that will beep at me. So there's not really any need. Uh, it would just be for fun. Uh, to put the buzzer in there. Um, and I don't know if the buzzer, if it would need to be sort of isolated using a transistor or something like that, I don't know. Uh, anyway, that, I'll keep that in mind. I, I might do that one day down the track on a rainy day. Anyway, today we're just going to have a look in here, but there's two things. So first of all, today's silly job title is Grounding Genius, the Grounding Genius, which is supposed to be, what, uh, is it assonance or is it alliteration? I forget, but the, the G is pronounced differently, so it doesn't sound quite right, does it? Anyway, job title for today is Grounding Genius, and today is the inaugural old book opening. Um, it's going to be a new segment on the video blog. Um, when I do a video, I'm going to take one of my old books off the shelf and, um, and tell you about it and have a look at it. Now, I have a whole heap of old books, um, and I'm not even really quite sure what I've got because I've got hundreds of them. Uh, so uh, it's an opportunity for me, just as well it is hopefully for you, just to see some of this old stuff. There's some really cool stuff floating around. So uh, I might pop you over to the bench so that we can have a look at this book together. And then after we've had a look at the book, we'll have a look at this circuit. Um, and if you have any thoughts or comments about the old book segment, I'd be happy to hear from you. I haven't done it before, so hopefully uh, hopefully that works out okay. So let's jump over to the bench and, uh, and see what we can see. Put you on here. Now, I wonder, um, so as you can see, the cover is very faded, um, and you can't even really read the title, but inside we'll be able to find the title. So uh, this is the Industrial Electronics Reference Book, Industrial Electronics Reference Book, and it was uh, by Electronics Engineers of the Westinghouse Electric Corporation. So this is a, a corporate work, how fascinating. And uh, down the bottom here, you perhaps can't see, but it's uh, published in New York and London in 1948. So it's well old by now. Copyright 1948 by Westinghouse Electric Corporation, all rights reserved. This book or any part thereof must not be reproduced in any form without the written permission of the publisher. Yeah, right. Well, I think I'm about to break that rule, aren't I? Dear me. So uh, this is the fore foreword, uh, written in April 1948 by A.C. Monteith, Manager, Headquarters Engineering Departments, Westinghouse Electric Corporation. So there's a forward. And, or a full word, there's a preface, is this is the preface, uh, and then there's a list of the people who contributed, looks like eight or so people, uh, and then the contents, uh, background of industrial electronics, electron emission, control of free electrons, electrical conduction in gases, vacuum tubes, gas tubes, photoelectric devices, industrial x-ray tubes, cathode ray tubes, ultraviolet radiators, circuit elements, tuned circuits and filters, transformers, vacuum tubes as circuit elements, rectifier circuits, amplifier circuits, circuits for oscillators, circuits for industrial control, transmission lines, uh, antennas, general requirements of rectifier applications, mercury arc rectifiers for power application, inverters, radio frequency heating, power line carrier, electronic instruments, industrial x-ray applications, electrostatic precipitation, uh, electronic motor control, regulation, resistance welding control, Industrial photoelectric control, applications of ultraviolet radiation, uh, radar, fundamentals and applications, care and maintenance of tubes, care and maintenance of electronic apparatus. Fascinating. So this was back in 1948, and they were already well across a whole lot of topics, weren't they? So, uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty interesting. Now, I, I, uh, I haven't done any research on this book, so I don't know uh, if it's worth any money or if there are other people with this book out there. Um, but as part of the, uh, the, the uh, blog post that goes with this video, I'll do some research and see what I can find out. And this is the first one that I've done, but I guess I should start... Uh, 
a catalogue of, of, of these books and I'll, uh, I'll catalogue this one as the first one. And uh, I'll, if, if I've got a link to some notes, I'll give you the link to the notes. So since we're here on the bench, might as well keep on keeping on, huh? This is the, uh, the continuity tester. So I just need uh, a little Phillips head, and I'm sure I've got one of those somewhere. This is a little Phillips head. So let's pop this guy out and just see what I've done. It shouldn't take us very long at all. Now there's two screws in the back here, and then there's two screws in the top, so it's four screws in total. I suppose uh, it wouldn't be a bad idea before we tear it apart that we just make sure that it's uh, functional. So uh, we just need some banana plugs. I think these will do. One and two. And if we put them together, on goes the green light. So it's just a continuity tester. I didn't know actually what resistance you could put across it and if it'd still work, I don't know. Uh, anyway, so let's take out the batteries. And, uh, and then we've got a couple of screws. I don't think I'll fire up the uh, electric screwdriver for this one. We'll just use the good old fashioned one that doesn't have a button. Screws are actually quite long. I heard a remark lately about uh, the long-handled screwdriver, or uh, it's a, a, a metaphor for uh, management who reach down through the organisational structure and microwave, micromanage someone who's doing some work rather than just giving them the order and then letting them get on with it. They uh, try to control everything themselves. Long-handled screwdriver. I'm beginning to think maybe this wasn't a good idea because these screws aren't coming out very well at all. I hope I haven't. Uh, destroyed them. I do feel like I've uh, perhaps uh, threaded them. That's eh, not too bad. I think this screwdriver is a rather poor quality screwdriver. Yeah, it is. Uh, well, there's just one more to do, so let's give it a go. I think this screwdriver was the free one that came with uh, my M2 uh, screw for my uh, NVMe. Um, drive. So, <clears throat> there we go. All right, well, let's see what's in the box. There he is. So, uh, oh, there we go. So there's a um, there's a resistor in there. And I've obviously put some heat shrink on, so that was very professional of me. And this guy has been soldered in there. Okay. So, uh, with the two terminals, a resistor. I'm not sure what kind of a resistor. That's green, grey, black, by the looks of it green, grey, black. I've got a, um, a cheat sheet over here. So it's green. Oh, I can't see properly because I've got the, I've got the yellow glasses on. It's not green at all. It's blue, grey, black. Blue, that looks like blue, grey, black. Point zero. So it looks like it's a 68 ohm resistor. I suppose we could check it. Why wouldn't we check it? Never hurts, it never hurts a test. So I'll just grab the good old multimeter and I'll put him, well, we've got some probes out, don't we? So uh, let's plug them in there and there, and then we'll put him in, in resistance mode. And then we'll just measure. Can you see that? I don't know, all right. Um, so we've got uh, black and black, and the measurement is 68 ohms, which is bang on what it's supposed to be. So it looks like we read that correctly. So um, I'm going to pop these out. Put them away. So we've got a green LED, 68 ohm uh, resistor, uh, two banana plug terminals, soldered in for the battery. Simple as that. Um, <clears throat> In future, we might uh, we might improve in by introducing uh, some sort of a buzzer. Now, I haven't done anything with a buzzer in recent history, but I think there's two different types of pi piezo uh, buzzers. Uh, I think they call one active and they call one passive. Now, my guess about that, and feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, but my guess about that is that um, the passive one you have to uh, drive with a oscillator so that it has a tone, and I think the active one just has its own uh, tone generator and it'll just buzz if you just put the voltage across the line. Uh, that's my guess what active and passive mean, I don't know. Uh, if you know, feel free to let me know. Perhaps I should go and research that. So i just got to put this guy back together. I have to say, I, I could have a, a much better uh, screwdriver. This one's kind of terrible. <sighs> so, uh, yeah, that was just a teardown of the continuity tester. You can see the, uh, the label on it there. I, I did that with the old uh, label maker. Um, 
I put the terminals at the top. You see that they're in the top there and uh, uh, on the other side because um, the battery uh, case uh, occupied the bottom. Uh, so, I mean, usually with the multimeter, the, the um, terminals are kind of, you know, at the bottom, aren't they? Usually they're down here somewhere, but in my case, they're up here. Uh, but that's because the batteries are here and there wasn't really space. So the lowest you could get them is about there, probably. So they're at the top, for better or worse. One more screw and then we're back in business. <clears throat> so I have to say, I'm pretty pleased that uh, that I've got that new segment of the video, which is the, uh, the look at the old books, because, uh, you know, those books, if you, if you don't take them off the shelf and have a look at them, they just sit there, don't they? Gathering dust. And there is some cool stuff in there um, to be found. It's pretty close now. All right. We'll put our batteries back in and we'll give him a quick test just to see. Oh. Give him a quick test just to see that he's still working uh, after we've torn him down and put him back together. Of course, it wouldn't be real good if it wasn't. That would kind of suck. So let's just plug in our probes. And yeah, he's still working. Wonderful. Yeah, so I, I, um, I guess that wasn't terribly exciting, but uh, that's, how, that's how I made this, uh, this continuity tester. As I say, I made it uh, in, a, in, a, uh, in a very early stage of building my lab. Obviously, I had uh, soldering iron, I had banana plug terminals, I had uh, shrink, uh, heat shrink. Um, so I, I think I did a pretty good job. I obviously had a couple of resistors up my sleeve, but I didn't yet have my multimeter, which is kind of surprising because, you know, I must have got my multimeter very shortly after. And at this point, I have about seven or eight multimeters. I've got two bench multimeters. I've got four cheap uh, multimeters and one sort of cheap multimeter. I'm actually hoping to get um, one of the EEV blog uh, multimeters. Those things are great. Um, I'll link you to them in, in the uh, in the details of this blog. Um, I've got it on my shopping list, but uh, yeah, I haven't. Um... <clears throat> I'll just pop you back over here actually while we finish up. So uh, yeah, as I was saying, I I, uh, I have a, a cheapo. This is my good multimeter, and it's not really exactly good. It's a cheapo brand, Digitech. I think I got it from JCar. It's cheap, cheap, cheap. Um, but it has, you know, a lot of functions, and I've just found it to be pretty reliable. Like, I mean, we used it just here now to measure the resistance, and it said 68 on a 68 ohm resistor. So, uh, you know, it seems to give good readings. I, I guess I don't use it that much. I've got a, another uh, uh, bench multimeter up there, and there's a bench multimeter over here as well. And the cool thing about the one that's over on this workbench is you press a button on the on the probe, and it'll speak the value to you. It's got a, 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 a speaker, and it can talk at you, which is kind of cool. So, um, yeah, look, it's Christmas time, uh, almost. It'll be December tomorrow. So um, I will probably have some more videos before Christmas. So I, I won't give you the Christmas greetings just yet. Um, I've got all sorts of things going on in the next couple of weeks, but I'll try to get some more videos done because I've got so many things to do. I want to do this um, uh, capacitor discharger. That's on my things to do. And uh, I've got a, um, the, uh, the, the circuit boards from PCBWay have arrived. This is them. So uh, we'll, we'll pop these out of the box. And when we do that, uh, we'll be able to do the... Um, the, the demo for the for the test clips. I don't know if you remember these, but uh, I've got these test clips and I want to give them a bit of a go. Um, so I'm going to make a circuit out of these with a 5.5 timer, timer on it so that I can use the clips and we can send it into the oscilloscope and just see what's going on. So it's just an excuse to use the clips and also an excuse to use the scope. Uh, and then there's a bunch of other things to do. I want to test out that power supply tester. Um, oh, I've got a new motherboard arrived. Um, I'm not really set up to do videos of computer building um, but I'm going to have to put together, I've got a computer in the corner here, it's, motherboard's going to be replaced with a new one, so uh, I might not do that on the video, but I'll think about it, we'll see how we go. Anyway, that's everything for today. So we just did the teardown of the continuity tester, we've started the inaugural old book segment of the video. Today's job title is Grounding Genius, and I'll have another video up for you soon. Thanks for watching.